Okay, I've gone and got the um, stub axle out. Here's the new one, and the new one I've painted with a, it, it just comes as bare metal, so I've painted it with some CRC black zinc, rust protection, um, corrosion factor 36 protection. So this is good stuff. Um, it it's just puts a black coat of paint on it for me, and that will set. I don't have to worry about it again. Um, even though it's an industrial tractor, it probably should be yellow, but when I, if I swing the camera around a little bit and pop him up there, you can see the kingpin housing here, it's black, so that'll sort of go with it. I'll get you back down here somewhere, somewhere near close enough, eh? And lock that up. Okay, so we have a new kingpin, a new kingpin housing, this old kingpin, now, on the, as we spoke about, this isn't the right one for the tractor and you can see where the angle grinder has been brought to play in here. So this was shorter than the housing and the bell crank, um, this bell crank here, you can see it was only, instead of the kingpin coming right through, it, the kingpin was down probably five millimetres or more, maybe a bit more. So, we've got that out. Now, all we want to keep on this is this hub. So, the hub and, um, yeah, look, that's about it. The wheel bearings and all that may be. If it needs new bearings and seals, we're gonna pop them in. If it doesn't, well, we won't bother. We'll just give them a big bath. So, to start off with, we'll just undo this cap here. Now, that's the old inch and a sixteenth. And it needs a big bath, this, you can see. On these later tractors, you can see it had a grease nipple in there. Um, and you can see the grease down there. So that'll get all cleaned up. Now, now we're in there, the grease is rusty looking. So that's no good, um, I'm presuming We'll be putting wheel bearings and all in here, which isn't a trouble, isn't a problem. I do have them here. So we'll just tidy this up so we can have a look in there and see what's going on. Okay, so we have the split pin. This side of the split pin is straight. The outside is bent over. There's a hundred ways to put a split pin in. They're all wrong in someone's eyes. I can go straight in the bin. Wipe the grease off that. Get your trusty. Oh, look at this. It's not a metric. Oh, what, what do you call that? It's a metric imperial shifter. 300 mil, 12 inch, so I don't know what to say there. Um, these King Chrome ones, if you look at the King Chrome Australia, these jaws open wider. That, that would be about inch and a quarter. They open a lot wider than the other ones, other brands, so. That's about all you'll ever see in my shop, is King Chrome. As in shifters or crescent wrenches, you call them, but we just call them shifting spanners here in Australia, shifters. This is probably inch and a sixteenth once more. You'll notice too the later hub. Um, you know the early hub has studs coming out and wheel nuts where the later one three fives and in this case our Massey Ferguson 20 has the heavy duty hub. It has extra supports here and you'll notice supports all around there. So it, it is a heavier hub but the um, the 100 series had these. Now yeah, that should just pop off. Uh, 
Okay, why won't that come off? I'll get my MIG welding pliers and see if I can... I've got this old paintbrush that's rubbish. I've been painting the old international engine with it, so... Okay, I think that's coming now. We're chucking this kingpin away, so we don't really care if we damage it. Normally, these just fall off. Now, yeah, see if I can. I might have to take this out. That's a bit heavy. I'll take him over, sit him in the vice here. Can't really see that, can you? Okay, that's got it out. There's a trusty wheel bearing. Imagine in here. Actually, the bearings don't look bad, but I think we'll just put new ones in. Well, here seems okay. Yeah, you can see the stub axle there. Actually, it's not worn, that's how that one's been made. I don't know what this is off. It's probably off an industrial tractor because you can see the yellow paint under here. It's certainly not off this tractor, it's off something else. And the kingpin housing, um, it was a different shape altogether as well. So, anyway, we have a brand spanking new one here. So, I'll go and give this a tidy up, clean the grease out, and um, yeah, we'll go from there, right? Eh? No need to pull all the bearings off this, this can just stay as it is. This can go back on there. And that's it. Might get someone out of trouble, I don't know, but there's quite a bit of wear down here as well. But... Um, you never know, people have all sorts of ideas, so... Um, yeah, it's quite stumpy there, isn't it? Anyway, we'll shut down, I'll go and clean this up and we'll go from there, right? Eh? Okay, I've cleaned... I've got a bearing set here. There we go. The Spar XS 2974. And the interesting thing is, it's the same for 3565, 148, 65 all the way through, 135 petrol, 2135, that's uh, the industrial before the 20, and then the 20 B, D and E. So um, that should be the same. So back in the days when parts were interchangeable with different models. So to get these cups out, the cups aren't in bad nick, but we're just gonna replace them anyway. You may be able to see down in there, about there, you can see 
where my thumb is there, there's a little cutaway, and so that gives you a chance to bring a punch in behind the bearing and give it a bit of a smack. And look at that. That just fell out like that. And that was an easy one. Sometimes you've got to get a bit excited. And the same down the back here. Now, that should be in there. And there she goes. So you can see, yeah, look, they're not too bad. But anyway, I've got a new set here, so a new set's going in. We need to give this a good wipe. Make sure there's no old grease in there at all. Same in here. Actually, I've got a bit of no-name brand. Brake cleaner, I, I run out of CRC. <laughs> and um, I just, that's an old can I've had for years. So I thought, well, I might use it up. I use CRC all the time now, because they help the channel out. But I thought I would just bloody get rid of that. Okay, that's looking good. So we have the outer seal that goes in the back, in last. We have the... Well, it's actually on the inside. But anyway, I won't tell if you won't. Have a needle bearing. And we have the cup. So the cup goes down in through here. We won't do that yet. I'll try and find the proper proper discs for bumping them in. I'll have them just up the other end there and try and use the right tool. That's got a bearing there. So that can go in the bin. The S yes, 72 sorry 9274 packet can go in the bin and I need to go and get my little set and work out what size I need. Okay now this is just a set I bought off eBay ages ago and they're on eBay I see they're on Amazon they're everywhere Next size up by the feel of that. I wonder will this one be too big? Yeah, oops, wrong end, mate. Yeah, that one would be the correct one. So that is size 45, 45 millimeter. And let's go for about here. Whoop. Bloody hopeless lens. Oh geez, that's might go that one. We'll get the proper handle. Put these out of the way. Cool. Okay. Now we'll put this inside bearing in first, which is the large one. Bit of oil on here. Try and sit him in square. 64 millimeter that disc. Try and keep him nice and true.
that's in. Right down on the shoulder. You can actually see in from the back there that it's there. Well, I can, don't know if you can. Okay, this next one. Try and sit him in square. That's a 45 millimeter disc. And look, you can press them in if you want to. Um, I have a press there, but it's just nice and easy to do this. Have a look in the back. You can, maybe I'll see in the back, it's right home. Okay, that can go over there out of the way. These can go ready for the scrap metal bin for recycling. That can go over there out of the way. Here I am rubbing on the bloody microphone so you won't be able to hear a thing. We'll go and get a bit of grease, eh? Okay, I've got a bit of LSA LX2. General purpose automotive and industrial uses including wheel bearings, lubrication for conventional and high speed tapered bearings operating under arduous conditions. So LSA LX2 is the go. And I've got to open a new one because I haven't got one open. Yeah, make sure your hands are clean. Make sure the bench is clean. Get the two new bearings. Get some grease in your hand and start working it in. You just work it in until you can see that the whole bearing is full. Then you can usually work it in the back. And you can see where it wants to push out the front. So we know it's pretty well full. Put a bit of the spare grease just in there for the moment. And the same with the little outer bearing. And by pushing it like that, you're actually opening the wide section and you're pushing it from the wide section, the wide gap in the race, to the thinner gap. So it sort of jams it all in there. So that looks pretty good. Now there's a story about putting grease in here and not putting grease in here and some people say it's a waste, some don't. I was taught as a young bloke to put some in. If nothing else it keeps it from rusting in there. Um, I don't imagine the bearing would get that hot, in a tractor at least, that the grease would run in case. But Anyway, look that's just something I've always done. I was showed to do it when I was a young fella, so I've been doing it all these years. I should be coming good soon. Okay, so the big bearing here, he has to go in first, down that way. And then this seal, I often like to put a bit of grease there. The seal sits up on the seal surface in there, but I do like to put a bit of grease there just for lube. And then this seal, I'll try and get a bigger disc. That's too big and that's the next size down, so. Okay, looks like we'll use the big one. Okay, 
Okay, we'll put the lid on that. A another interesting thing with this grease is if you use cartridges like the LX2 here, and it gets down below finger depth, you just get the snips and cut it down there and put the top on, and you can actually use it all the way to the bottom so you can reach it all the way. So there you go. So we'll try and keep this straight if we can. For a bloke that's keeping it straight, you couldn't get much bloody crooked. And there's the, you've got a dirt excluder seal here that will sit right down in the groove there. That looks like it needs a wipe. And the actual seal that does the main work is probably five mil from the end. So I might, might give this a nice wipe out inside here. Slide that in there. And you can see that, you can feel it just been clicking and went in to where it's supposed to be. So then this bearing here. Should be able to just pop in. Yeah, this little washer here will give him a bit of a wipe off. That should sit just down against the bearing. Yep, that's good. And this nut it needs a bit of a bougie as well. Looks to be three quarter UNF castellated. Okay, so we'll tidy him up. Okay, <laughs> I pulled the hub back off again um, because the nut was trying to gall a little bit on the um, on the stub axle. So I thought, well, it'd be better just to pull the pull it off and tidy him up. So. I went and got my three-quarter UNF die nut and run down the thread here and the thread on the stub was fine. Might have had a slight burr where the hole is but look very little that wasn't what's causing the trouble at all so just running a die nut down there a thread chaser that was enough to make sure that was the go but then the nut wouldn't still go on so um, the nut had like a little bit of a burr up in here, so I, um, I run a tap down through the nut and cleaned any burrs and that off. I got a little bit out of the nut. So now, probably I should have done this before I started, but I'm not used to them playing up, but that there, there's no worries. That's nice and free. So I can drop the front, drop the top back down again. Um. That's a nice firm fit when you just got to bump them like that. And we put the washer on. Find the key. Now 
And that's certainly a bit better. Not just a bit better, bloody lot better. Okay, so they say 60 something foot pounds. What I like to do is just, that's just firm. Now, the idea is to turn it half a dozen times. And what we're looking to do is make sure all the needle bearings, the, the tapered rollers are sitting down in the place. And you can actually feel that's got a bit better now, a bit looser. And if I come up one, until the um, line hole lines up for the split pin, that feels pretty good. Now I'm just going to back it off one, I just want to see what it feels like. And that nut's too loose, see that? So with new bearings, I just like to take it up. Take it up to the first hole after you go sort of finger tight, a little bit more. Just take it to the next hole. There's a tractor, it's not a race car. Beautiful. Okay, I should have had a split pin organised, shouldn't I? But I'll have one here in a second. Okay, let's see if this one fits. Oh, look at that, just beautiful. I don't even know what that is. It's 532 or something like that, I think it said. Okay, that's not too bad. Nice and clean. There's a little gasket on there you can see and I'm going to leave that little gasket on there. There's an aeroplane going over the top. I wonder what he's doing. Probably saying, how the bloody hell do I do my wheel bearings? I'll see if bloody Lance can show me. And from time to time, give this fella a pump, probably whenever you change your engine oil would be enough. Just a couple of pumps. Over time it'll probably fill up now. That's as tight as I'm going to go with that for the moment. Once I get the wheel on and I can hold it easier, we'll go that way. 